Our next speaker used to rap to pay the bills. And if you can find it, there's even a video of him on the Christmas episode of the inaugural season of the Hard Knock Show of him rapping. So please welcome John. Hi, everyone. I'm John with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, it's a privilege to be here, and it's a privilege to be here with my team. We've got Max Lyons, Bryant Davis, Sarah Malapale, and William Britt. Um, they are elite in every way. So if you haven't had a chance to meet with them, please do at some point. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk about them later in, later in the session. But uh, yeah, as a group, uh, we lead R&D for football ops for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, in this talk, we'll explore ideas we've leaned on to establish an identity for our department. And uh, yeah, we'll unpack a couple areas in football ops where uh, we're integrated into what we do. Um, before, we get, before we get started, I just want to say I was born in the Bronx and I grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey, right across the George Washington Bridge. So every time I come back to the area, I feel like I'm back home and, and uh, I'm thankful to be here. Um, so yeah, b uh, before I get started, I also wanted to acknowledge the first time I ever um, saw Jared in action at the Sloan Conference a couple years ago. And uh, I had to dig through my old archived Instagram posts to find this one. But um, I'll, I'll just read it. Uh, let's see. Quote, coolest moment, uh, this is two 2016, coolest moment of the conference. Getting the first of three free books given out after Jared's presentation. Standing room only, but easily the best session I've seen in the past three years here. End quote. With the hashtags clarity, instruction, learning, and respect. Um, you know, just over eight years later, you know, I hope I, you know, kind of mirror that spirit of, um, simplicity, substance, and uh, sincerity, you know. So, Jared, thank you for having me for, at the conference, and let's just go. go. Um, I said it earlier. Um, in this talk, we'll explore ideas we've leaned on to establish an identity for our department and, uh, and then unpack some of the ways we've integrated our, our work into the traditional elements of football operations. Um, among the many ideas we've leaned on, uh, there are three we'll discuss today. Uh, where we choose to operate on the continuum between theoretical and applied research. Uh, the premium we place on humility, clear communication, and collaboration. And finally, uh, the critical importance of trust. Um, first, let's talk about uh, theoretical versus applied research. To be clear, we're very intentional about focusing on the application of theory by having a presence in the process. Uh, to be more precise, I should say that we fiercely and relentlessly prioritize delivering um, work that can be readily provided, that can readily provide the requisite support needed to drive evidence-based decision-making. Uh, we're not doing research just to get a better understanding of things. Uh, you know, we've, we have clearly defined problems, and we're trying to find solutions to those problems. Um, yeah, in order to do that effectively, we have to be present, and we have to be a part of the process. Um, is Megan here? From this? Hey, Megan. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday in the afternoon briefly. Um, I really appreciated the em emphasis of your opening session um, regarding the importance of engaging and cultivating stakeholder relationships. Uh, from my decade plus, decade plus in football, I may go even further uh, to say that the strength of those relationships um, are not only critical, but is precisely what can make or break an R&D department in the NFL. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Seth Walder, he's a ESPN analytics writer, and uh, this is just a list he updates every one or two years of all the NFL analytics staffers that, on each team. And uh, it gives you a good picture of kind of the landscape. Um, clearly, there's at least one R&D staff member on each team, um, and, and some teams obviously have more headcount. Uh, there are a lot of good, talented, hardworking NFL staffers on this list who are colleagues of mine and, and close friends. Um, common frustrations that come from some of the peers in quiet moments uh, of vulnerability are along the lines of things like, how do we get key decision makers to listen to us more? Um, how do we get m more buy-in? How do we get more plugged into the process? We do great work. Uh, we crank out reports, email PDFs, and create dashboards but we don't get any feedback, and we don't know if they're reading what we leave on their desks. Um, while I do understand that frustration, that experience and that mentality is diametrically opposed to the vision we have for our department. Um, again, in order to do what we do effectively, we have to be present and we have to be uh, a part of the process. We have to be in meetings with coaches, in meetings with scouts, and be in meetings with our front office staff. 
Uh, we have to be side by side with them in the bunker and be shoulder to shoulder with them in the trenches. Uh, and I mean, I mean that figuratively and literally. And, and to be honest, in the experience of being set apart from the process as a quant kind of in the, in the back room, um, yeah, the way I got into football is, is to fundamentally different from that. Uh, and, um, you know, 12 years ago when I wanted to pivot out of uh, my actuarial career, um, I just wanted to coach high school ball, and, and math just happened to be something I was really good at for most of my life. Um, just a quick synopsis. This would take many beers to explain, but in 2006, I was working part-time in the nonprofit space and making mixtapes and doing open mics. By 2009, I was on my way to becoming a credentialed actuary. Um, I loved seeing Alistair here. He was a director at PwC when I was there, and I, I, was, I was excited to see you yesterday. Um, and then in 2013, by then I had become a credentialed actuary for some time, and by 2014, God had other plans. And soon I was working with the Rutgers football coaching staff. So this now, this is a great picture. Um, this is Where's Waldo, see if you can find me. Um, you know, there are many people I care deeply about in this picture, many relationships that were forged in the fire of doing hard things with good people i.e. effectively acquiring and developing talent and winning football games, and really just doing life together. Um, the saying goes that there's nothing quite like a post-game locker room after a great win, and this was one of the best. Um, this was the last game of the regular season, and we were down 35-10 to 10 towards the end of the first half, and then ended up winning 41-38 with the biggest comeback in school history. Uh, not only that, the victory gave us our seventh win and made us bowl game eligible in our first season in the Big Ten and we'd eventually beat North Carolina in the inaugural Quick Lane Bowl at Ford Field. Here, I'd just like to mention that the two coaches at the center of the picture are two men who have had a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, the man left the center is Coach Kyle Flood, who gave me my first job in football when he was the head coach of Rutgers, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and today he's the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach um, for the Texas Longhorns football team. The man right of center is Coach Ralph Friesen, uh, who was hired out of retirement to be our offensive coordinator and our quarterback coach. I had the privilege of being his direct assistant and worked closely with them. Uh, coach loved Maryland. He played for Maryland. And then from 2001 to 2010, he was the head coach. And actually, um, that last season, 2010, he got coach of the year in the ACC. But for political reasons, after, after that last game, um, the AD fired him. So um, yeah, everyone in this photo loved to get this win for Coach Friesen because we know what it meant to him. Again, you know, sharing this picture just to illustrate that there's something special about accomplishing hard things with good people, and that if R&D in the NFL is imagined and executed within an integrated way, um, that it could be beautiful, and, and it could be a beautiful and powerful thing. Um, and, and if that doesn't really jive with you, I just really like this picture, so I just wanted to talk about it. Um, yeah, if you haven't found me yet, I'm all the way on the left with my hand up. There's like 200 people in the photo. OK. All right. So yes, we are relentless in prioritizing work to drive evidence-based decision-making by being a part of the process. Um, and now the second idea. We place a premium on humility, clear communication, and collaboration. OK, another team picture, OK? This is our 2018 team picture with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I'll just say a bunch of random facts. I'm all the way on the left, next to my good friend David Thornton, who continues to be a gold standard for what it means to be a servant leader. Um, again, a lot of people in this pic picture I care about deeply, um, and that's what football is all about. In my eight seasons in the NFL, this is actually the only team, only season where I got to experience a playoff win. Uh, another fun fact is that there are four coaches in this picture who would go on to be head coaches on other teams. Um, we were pretty stacked. Um, Coach Reich would go on to lead the Carolina Panthers, Coach Sirianni, the Philadelphia Eagles, Coach Eberflus, the Chicago Bears, and Coach Gannon, the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I'll leave this picture up to see if you notice anything peculiar about me in that, in that left corner. Um, and I'll make a point to illustrate the importance of thinking about yourself less, especially in the context of the bigger picture of a team. Uh, so yeah, back to humility, communication, and collaboration. Um, in regards to humility, you know, another recurring narrative um, that I hear from you know, my counterparts um, across the league is, is kind of that idea that our recommendations led to those player acquisitions, or our recommendations led to those decisions in game. Um, we deserve a seat at the table because we're an engine that's like generating all this value for the team, um, you know, which I could potentially sympathize with um, in some situations.
But then when players don't pan out, or rather the players don't develop in the way that you projected, or a decision fails, um, I, I, I kind of cringe when I see analytic staffs um, respond in two ways, one of two ways. One, first they'll say the strategy was sound, the execution was poor. Uh, or the second way is they totally shift gears and um, try to frame it as if they had no agency in the decision-making process and that they did a good job of just presenting allegedly objective you know, facts. Um, I, I'm, another way to put this whole thing um, really is just we need to have a healthy amount of wariness about trying to seek credit for successes. And if, we, if we're going to go out on a limb to do that, then we have to have an equivalent amount of accountability when things don't work out. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about trying to win games and get the right, right players. And ultimately, it doesn't matter who gets the credit, but it's about getting it right. Um, in, in regards to communication and collaboration, uh, it's kind of long-winded. I'll just be direct. I think a lot of R&D groups um, across leagues and, and in our league at times, they over-index for, um, for uh, technical skill and... Uh, and uh, communication skills and empathy kind of become extra credit or an afterthought. But in our department, it's a requirement. Um, I think if you can't explain what you're building in a, in a clear, concise manner, you either don't understand what you're building or you're just a bad communicator, so no one wants to hang out with you anyway. So um, it's a requirement. All right, now back to the picture. Um, did anyone have a guess of what's weird about me? Anybody? I'll give you a dollar if you get it. So I'm not, I'm not there. There's like 10 of us who were Photoshopped in, OK? So if you see DT had like a 10, 11-year career in the league, he's a big dude. Um, but I'm not like 11 inches shorter than him, right? So um, and when, when we took the picture, um, the team photographer, Matt, was like, hey, we're going to crop you in. No one's going to see below like your belly button. So my shirt's not tucked in, right? So but clearly, I'm on the edge. It's land and fly. So, you know, that kind of peeved me a little bit. Um, but then uh, the next 10 family members or friends who walked through, the, walked through the facility, I was like, is there anything weird about me? And they're like, you look fine. Why do you keep asking, you know? Um, so I, 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 whenever I look at this photo, I, I'm annoyed. But at the same time, I'm like, OK, like some things that matter to me aren't really a big deal, right? Because literally, the picture looks fine. And none of you could tell that. I was photoshopped, or that I'm like a foot taller than my buddy, or that my shirt's going down to my knees. And no, no, none of you. Understand. So I think that's just a good illustrative example of like get over yourself, you know? Okay. Let's see. So yes, we place a premium on humility, clear communication, and collaboration. Uh, and now, fi finally, the critical importance of trust. Um, a quote from Stephen Covey. Uh, trust is the glue of life. It's the most essential ingredient in effective communication. It's the foundational principles that hold all relationships. I think, you know, that's intuitive. It's nice to hear things, see things in front of you that you know that are intuitively true. Um, and then, to be frank, um, it's, me it's easier to trust someone when they're a good person, you know? So um, it seems obvious, but... When, I, when, I'm, when we are vetting candidates for our staff, my question is, is this a good person? Because um, that, that, that removes a lot of friction. And I mean, we've all worked in a lot of different scenarios, so you understand what I'm saying. Um, on good people, let's turn to the words of New York City's finest, Colin Powell, rest in power. Uh, give me the right people, and I don't much care what organization you give me. Good things will happen. Give me the wrong people, and it doesn't matter what you do with the organization. Bad things will happen. Um, two obvious criteria we use to filter out candidates for our staff, you know, love, love of football and a requisite technical skill set. Um, one non-obvious criteria we use when filtering out candidates for our staff. If anyone from any walk of life, you know, bumped into that individual, they had a five-minute conversation, they walk away, and the takeaway is like, dang, that guy's really smart, or she's brilliant, and that's their only takeaway, probably that would be a no for me. Um, why would that even come up in a five-minute conversation? So to me, the test is, after talking to this person for however long, um, you would want the person to walk away from the, the person from any walk of life to walk away from the interaction saying, 
that person's a really, really good person. Um, so we over-index for good people. Um, and just under a year ago, find, you know, find really, really good people is what we did. You know? uh, we went through a month-long process looking for right people to build something special in Dallas. Uh, the picture up top was taken at training camp at Oxnard, California last summer, not even a month after we had come together as a team of five. Uh, as of today, we've been working together for just under 10 months, and I feel like I've known you guys like for a lifetime. Uh, Sarah, when you came on board, I knew, you had, I knew of your ability to bridge the gap between data and football understanding, and knew of your poise and your strength navigating this space successfully as a woman of color. Uh, today, I know of your elite blend of modeling and football knowledge, supportive and positive attitude, your willingness to help, and your elite ability to build relationships. Will, when you came on board, I knew of your unique background as a two-sport college athlete with strong technical expertise and a positive attitude. Today, I know of your immaculate code, um, your attention to detail, your high school football knowledge, and your elite ability to build relationships and collaborate in a team environment. Max, when you came on board, I knew of your top tech pedigree, um, your eager eagerness to serve, and your willingness to do what it takes to help the team win. Uh, today, I know of your elite organization skills, proactive initiative, holistic understanding of everything we do from a technical standpoint, and your ability to communicate at a high level. Bryant, when you came on board, um, I knew of your strength as a modeler, uh, your strength as a communicator, and your love for football. Today, I know, you, I know of your adaptability, your willingness to help, uh, your elite modeling and coding ability, and your collaborative nature, and your patience for your teammates, um, especially me. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the Dallas Cowboys Strategic Football Operations Department, and uh, we are who we are. Um, it is what it is. But um, the, uh, oh, three minutes. OK. Uh, we act, it actually just got tweeted uh, like an hour ago, but we also added two strategic fellows to our crew, so we continue to grow. Um, but one thing I'll add, because I don't know how the timing works anymore, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for good people. So, you know, if, if you know people who love football, who love to code, full stack developers, data engineers, analysts, what have you, I mean, just good people, they, didn't even need to, they don't even have to be technical. Like, I love, I think finding good people is very hard. So when I, when I find good people, I hold on to them. Um, so, yeah, just hit me up if you got someone good. Um, and this is for all the virtual people, too. Um, Oh, random frat. Brian, I don't know if you know this. That photo on top was on our birthday. So it's kind of funny we had the same birthday. Uh, and today is actually Sarah's birthday. So if you guys have a chance, please wish Sarah a happy birthday, too. Okay. All right. Got two minutes. Now, this is the second half of my talk. <laughs> I got two minutes. Um, we could talk about this if, if, if you want. Yeah, I think you guys have my contact info. You can slide in my DMs or whatever. But um, we have a lot of really good people at the Dallas Cowboys. I think a, a quick one-liner is um, usually when a new department comes in play, it's, it's part of an entire regime change. Um, one, one amazing thing about the situation we're in is we, get, we have an opportunity to, to work with the elite coaching staff that's already in place. We get to work with the elite scouting staff that's already in place. And we get to work with the elite front office and medical team and strength and conditioning staff that's already in place. Um, and it's crazy. And obviously, you guys are, you know, there's a lot more horsepower in this room than in my brain, but just one-off kind of quick hitters for context. No other team has won 12, 12 or more games in each of the last three seasons. We've produced more all pros and the most all pro seasons from the last four draft classes. We've produced the most pro bowlers and pro bowl seasons through the last five draft classes. And we regularly get above average production from our day three picks um, in the draft. So, you know, I think all five of us uh, take it very seriously when we say it, it's a privilege to work with all the people that we work with in our building. Um, they're elite in every way, too, I think. That's a, that's a testament to ownership, and, and it goes all the way down. Um, just a lot of great people in the building. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs>